Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. My name's Ed Bird and welcome to my channel. Today I've got for you an initial review of the A6 Meta Racer. Is it red? Is it orange? Let me know in the comments. A very quick introduction to the shoe. Guide Soul technology here, which is obviously completely different to speed roll technology that Saucony are using in the Endorphin Pro. There is the implementation of the carbon plate here. I do believe it is a little different though to some of the other manufacturers. Flight foam here, ASICs reckon this shoe could last somewhere between 200 and 300 kilometers. Grip sole, apparently it will bite into the road like a hungry stoat. Not sure about that. ASICs reckon these in a race situation are for anyone that's hitting about six minutes 50 per mile. So there's bang on my half marathon target pace. Certainly a very weight relieved upper here. 24 millimeters in the heel and 15 millimeters in the forefoot, making for a nine millimeter drop. Although as you can see from the shape of this shoe, I'm not entirely sure where they measure it from because forefoot's here, but it bends right up. I believe the carbon plate in the Meta Racer is in fact wishbone shape. I haven't seen any images or pictures of it. It's just what I've heard. For my UK size 11, these clock in 240 grams. So that's about 15 grams heavier than the next percent in my size and 16 grams lighter than the Endorphin Pro in the same size. If you're interested, that's about 12 grams heavier than the 4% Flyknit. I found these pretty much spot on, true to size for my UK size 11. They're about 29 centimeters in length. So to test these out in true Ed Bud style, a 10 mile run, that's about 16.1 kilometers, seven minutes, 23 seconds per mile average, which is four minutes, 36 per kilometer. Clocked in, bang on, one hour, 14 minutes, and average heart rate was about 144 beats per minute. It was humid out there, I'll tell you that. So let's discuss the upper first. The sunrise red material in the ASICS Meta Racer upper really pops, popping like bubbles perhaps at a West Ham match. It's exceptionally breathable, I found today. Temperatures were around about 12 centigrade or Celsius. Apparently, they're one and the same. Celsius is kind of taken over and centigrade is the old style. Again, very high humidity. I found the shoe to be light and airy, almost as much as Mrs. Edbud's lemon cake that she made recently. Not dense in the slightest, very comfortable. I did experience a little bunching of the upper when I did tighten the shoe up. I think it's old Asics being really generous with their material again. I had a similar problem in the Nova Blast, and I think a similar problem in the Evo ride as well. Maybe you can just cut back a little bit ASICs on the materials. Only in the forefoot though, don't do it anywhere else. It could be the patent Ed Bud torpedo feet. They're just so narrow that I always find there's a bit of an excess of material at the front of the shoe. I don't think going down half a size would have solved anything really. I think that would probably would have made the shoe a tad short for me. Lockdown was easily achieved here. I used a runner's knot on this occasion to tie the shoes up and I had no slippage in the heel. A firm, very supportive fit. You do feel a little bit like your foot is being placed into a space shuttle. Weight limited, minimal interior, and it's fully aimed at that race kind of feel. Perhaps it's a little bit like a Triumph Stag car. Something like that anyway. Release the sandbags from the air balloon basket and let's fly. The laces, oh boy, they're lovely. A waxy feel surprises your digits as you take them in hand. They're a little coarse, but they stay firmly tied. It's a bit like the wick of a candle, actually. Yeah. I have to say, A6, top drawer on those laces. Go on, everybody, join in. Got to give them a clap for that. Did I notice the ventilation hole at all? No. But bone dry conditions out there today meant I couldn't really experience the full features of the ASICS Meta Racer. It really was very humid out there today. I really could have done with a drink around about seven miles. There was a man actually with his hose pipe watering his plants, and I almost asked him to sort of just spray me with the water. It was that warm. I know you guys over in other countries always laugh at me when I say it's warm, but it's a weird heat. It's sort of like a humid heat here. It's not very pleasant, but it's certainly very enjoyable upper here. Didn't really experience any problems with it at all. There's a little bit of padding around the heel area and there's there's no heel counter look so upper wise a few points removed for the overly generous material in the toe box area for me that's a bit of an asics common feature so my initial review for the upper i'm going to give the meta racer a 2.7 out of three midsole now a putty christmas cake icing type look to the meta racer midsole flight foam is deployed here for your foot pleasure. But is there more to this? You certainly know that there's a carbon plate in this shoe. It's very rigid. 
can bend it. There's very little flex here. There's guide sole technology here. And you certainly feel the rock and roll on toe off. I found today that my cadence was quite high, but my stride length wasn't quite as long as it normally is. Certainly in comparison to recent runs in the Saucony Endorphin Pro and the Alphafly Next Percent. Despite the narrower forefoot and heel, the arch support here is much wider. So I think overall you've probably got a slightly wider surface area to the outsole. And I found this shoe very stable underfoot. There does appear to be a duo of different foams here in the forefoot section of the Meta Racer. There's clearly flight foam here, but there does seem to be another type of foam, maybe a variant of flight foam, that's a little more cushioned and forgiving. Though I would suggest that the Saucony Endorphin Pro is closer to ZoomX in terms of its cushioned and forgiving nature. Here the forefoot feel is more akin to the Adidas Takumi Sen 6, maybe the SL20 and the Adios 4. Asics sticking firmly to what they do best in terms of that race flat department. I think in terms of underfoot feel, if kind of over here is a trainer and over here is kind of a race flat Certainly the shoe's kind of here somewhere, much closer towards a race flat feel than a daily trainer. I really enjoyed the ride in the Meta Racer today, but I think the lack of a more prevalent cushion in the midfoot and the forefoot could put off a few people. I think it also may feel a little bit too stiff for some runners who are looking for a more versatile type midsole. I think certainly the Saucony presents a more forgiving underfoot feel than the Meta Racer. Certainly Saucony seem to be making a big deal out of that, that their shoe can kind of do lots of things when some of the other shoes are certainly more aimed at specific uses. So for me, on my initial run, I'm going to give this a 2.6 for the midsole. I like it. It's firm, but it's fair. I'd say not as cushioned as something like the Reebok Run Fast 2 midsole. It's certainly as snappy as the SL20. If you like a more traditional racing flat feel, you might prefer this over the Saucony Endorphin Pro and certainly over the Alpha Fly. Outsole now. So ASICs have utilized a brand new outsole technology here called ASICs Grip. And it's made of real salmon. No, it's not really. It looks like it though, doesn't it? It does have a really interesting sort of texture to it, almost like a sort of plasticine Play-Doh type texture. It's a little pliable and it's a little cushioned too. Will it be as durable as Asics high abrasion rubber? Only father time will tell. I do think this will be a good shoe though when Christmas comes around, you know, it looks quite a Christmassy shoe. Only I would think about Christmas right now in the middle of summer. It felt lovely and grippy on concrete and pavement. It was all right on compacted dirt. Watch out for those twigs though. I did hear this really nasty crunch at one point as I'd gone over a twig. It wasn't the twig crunching. It certainly sounded like the midsole material. It wasn't happy with me. I do like the fact that very little debris can get caught up anywhere on the outsole. That's a big problem for me. I come back with grams and grams worth of dirt and stuff that I've picked up on my runs. It's certainly a very interesting type of outsole. Unlike some of the other shoes recently, it's got a couple of smaller rubber sections at the back, but there is quite a lot of rubber here in the midfoot and the forefoot. Alas, no wet surfaces to try the Asics grip out on today. All I could find was the glistening dew on the fresh morning grass. So I ran across that a bit, but it seemed okay. Certainly it does grip and it provides some really good traction when you push off. I'm liking it Asics. I'm liking it. So how will this outsole hold up over time? I think it's got some BA Barocas style attitude and some toughness. So we shall see. I'm liking everything here in terms of outsole. I'm going to give this a 2.8 out of 3. Just taken off a little bit there because we can't really tell what it's going to be like over time. How durable will you be? On to value. So value wise at £180 or $200, I don't feel this is as versatile a shoe as you're going to get in the Endorphin Pro. That shoe feels really good at slower paces and at faster training tempos and race paces too. This is very much a tempo and race shoe. Speed training, yes. Slower recover intervals, no. That guide sole technology and the lower stack heights, I think, lends itself to much faster cadences and higher effort tempo trials. So as a result of this, I think that £180 price tag might put off a few people and send them across Saucony's way, as I feel that's a slightly more forgiving 
and somewhat more versatile shoe. Yes, that one's got some more weight, perhaps a slightly wider surface area in the forefoot and I think a more trainer-like feel to it. So very much a high tempo and race shoe here, but that's not a bad thing. Sometimes it's good to be a master of one single trade. I think those on a budget though will probably opt for the more versatile Saucony. So at 180 or $200, I think value is going to take a little bit of a hit here. Though I'm not putting the shoe down for being a good race option. I'm going to give this a 2.4 out of 3 for value. I don't think the shoe is going to be for everybody or even every single race type. I'm not sure I'd want to go a marathon in this. I think a half marathon, all out, no problem. You could probably run some really nice 5 and 10k time trials in this right now but as i say i think it's ideal for me for probably a half marathon so that gives us an overall 10.5 out of 12 for the meta racer it's a good score but it gets a special award for the superb waxy coarse feeling laces top notch a6 let me know in the comments is it red? Is it orange? Tell me. Are you thinking of going for the A6 Meta Racer? Is it tickled your fancy? Or are you a little bit put off by the more race flat feel? Let me know in the comments, guys. A film recommendation today. I think I've probably watched Napoleon Dynamite. It's got to be over a hundred times. It just gets better and better with every single watch. I'm not sure if it's the sort of slightly misfit bunch or crew of people that Napoleon hangs out with, but I certainly feel some empathy with him. And he certainly knows how to dance. And I really agree with Pedro's message. Trying to make your dreams come true. I think it's an important one. I'm not sure that this film, like the Meta Racer earlier in my review, is gonna be for everybody. But I think if you do like it, you'll really like it. Okay, that's all from me for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the very end of the video. If you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when I launch those new videos. Please give the video a thumbs up like, it really helps out the channel. And also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.